Every step I take, I move my truth. Every time they tell me stop, I use. Every comment, hate that makes my feel. Gather up my energy and boom. I hear them talking, saying the way that I move is so reckless. That is a part of my mind I've been blessed with. Giving my blood so I am relentless. All right. This is the Keep Hammering Collective with Eva Shockey. How are you? I'm great. I'm so happy to be here. We've had an amazing day. All, I mean, amazing, I don't know how long it's been, a handful of hours, but a full day packed into those hours. We got it done. I mean, we're, you really left the last part, which is my favorite, visiting to not very much time, but right. we're going to do it. We're going to do it anyways. Yeah, we had, to, we had to get a lot done. Before, so I'm not, you know who I'm good at talking to? Just like kind of dumb bow hunters like me. So I don't want that fly in here, but so I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone talking to what I say is the princess Diana of hunting. How's that? I mean, no one's ever compared me to princess Diana, but, <laughs> but so, I think that's a good thing, right? I like princess Di, but to be on my A game, I got to do this. This is supposed to help my IQ. And your focus. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? How do I feel? After that. I feel great. Good. I feel great. Good. I'm hoping I got that honey glazed glow <laughs> I'm from the workout. <laughs> I'm still kind of, I can feel sweat dripping down my back. I'm still sweating. So. But that's good. What brought you here to Oregon on this trip? I was in, uh, where it was Redmond? So like a few hours from here. And I came for the Loophole Shooting Academy, basically long range essentially like competitive shooters that are training us to shoot long range distances with the loophole optics. Right. And it was so much fun. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, we started in the range and we did like a hunting course. So you hike through the mountains, you have to spot targets, range targets, get down, like get in the shooting position and shoot. And it was like, I know you don't really shoot guns, but it was really fun. <laughs> you no, would have even liked it. I can appreciate that though. Yeah. That sounds fun. It was, it was yeah. just nice to be outdoors. And what was the longest shot you guys took? A thousand yards. A thousand. Yeah, did they had one at a mile, like seventeen hundred yards. What? But we never got to it. Um, I did hit it, but then also we were shooting at a target that was five hundred and thirty yards or something offhand, and I I was like this close to it, and then really? we had to go. And I was, you oh. know me, I'm like, well, I got to finish, but then I couldn't. They made me leave. Well, oh. today we wouldn't let any work go unfinished. I know. So today we we're out on the range. Your brand new bow you just got today from Bowtech. <laughs> yeah. And everybody knows Hoyt sponsors this podcast. I love Hoyt. I really don't care though. I don't care what bow people shoot. I just want them to shoot. Yeah, I just want true. them to enjoy archery. So we went out and met at Bowtech. They got you set up with a new bow and got you dialed in at 20 yards in three arrows. Not I a mean, new bow, an Eva, a new Eva bow. Oh, a new Eva Shockey bow. An Eva Shockey bow. Uh, yeah, because I didn't have, because I was at Leupold and... Yeah. I feel like someone must have fallen through in the podcast because two minutes ago, Rihanna's like, hey, do you want to come on the podcast? And I was like, well, kind of last minute, but yeah, <laughs> I can well, tell that you had someone more important that couldn't come, but I made it happen, but I didn't have a boat with me. That's why. There, well, we, yeah, we had a few high profile people that I canceled. Because <laughs> you knew I was in town? Right. I mean, I think Drake was <laughs> said he would be available. I said, no. Uh, Trump said he could come out. I said no. That'd be a good one though. But yeah, I was. Yeah. It all worked out though, didn't it? Ronaldo, the soccer player. Oh yeah, he's good. He wanted to come and I said Shiano. no. I said yeah. I said no, Eva's gonna be here. So you bumped everybody. But we got out so we got out to Wayne's with the new Eva Shockey bow and we're like I could tell, you know, we're we got back there. I mean, just got dialed in first to so try and figure out the site. Then we got back there and you started asking, what's the record? So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> now I see what the goal is. So the record was Courtney with 101 yards. She hit the balloon. Which is amazing. That's a long shot. And like, I assumed you meant she, Courtney already shot. Like she just picked up the bow. That's, that's the record really, because I mean, I've been shooting, but that's It was cool. a record until today. That's true. <laughs> so then we got Eva back there at 110 yards. And you made it happen. Mm -hmm. We went to what 112, but then I couldn't even like sight it. Like I couldn't, I lost the balloon in my sights. I was so high up at 110. Eva's sight was getting down toward the path of the arrow, but then the sight bottomed out anyway. So then we're picking spots <laughs> in the horizon. And for doing that, your grouping at 110, 108, 112 yards was pretty damn impressive. You know what I'm glad though? Hmm. At first, because I haven't done this with you before, I was like, oh man, I wish we could podcast first, mm -hmm. like visit and then go do all the stuff. 
But if I had to chew right now with my arms that can barely pick up my water, <laughs> there is absolutely no way I'd be able to shoot. So you obviously thought about that. No, I mean, my thought is I'm not a natural conversationist like Joe. Yeah. So my thought is I like to lift, run, shoot, share an experience with people, create a bond, kind of work through some things, talk, visit, and then I have better conversations with them. Because yeah. of that connection. Well, we already have done all this for like years. I mean, the most people you have, you know them. I mean, some of them, you know them, but some of them, you just meet them mm-hmm. right before. So you mm-hmm. actually, that would actually be hard to sit down and podcast. So yeah. How, how long does our friendship go? A long time. I mean, before I knew Tam, yeah. I'm married for eight years. So at least 10, 12 years probably. Yeah. Remember we used to do like mountain ops at the Western Island? I know. That was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, we did. We had... Oh, remember the first time we did, <laughs> remember that line yes. that we had? And we did it, did we do it together? Yeah. Yeah, we did it together. Yeah, that was insane. But there was a line that went, I don't know how long we were there. And they had to like put us under jackets to get us out of the thing. And there was people that were all butt hurt that signed before us or after us. It didn't have the same yeah, lines. So they drama. were mad. <laughs> But whatever. Who wouldn't want to come up and meet the two of us with our big happy smiles? I don't know. Haters. I'll just say haters. <laughs> yeah. So then we, we lifted there. We've lifted in Vegas. I remember there was an infamous video of you calling me out in Vegas. Remember? Oh, yeah. Because you, you didn't show up one morning. A bunch or of the girls. Yeah. And uh, let's see. I think Because you were out in Vegas and we were all getting fit and you were out. Right. Whatever you were doing. Right. In Vegas stuff. Doing what I do. <laughs> I don't think we've ever run, though, before today. I don't think I've ever run before today either. So, ever? <laughs> well, no, I mean, I just, it's not that I don't like it. Yeah. I mean, no, I don't really like it. <laughs> but if you lived here, how nice was that hill? Yes. So I love mountains. I was just telling someone today, I grew up on the West coast of Canada. Like, you know, my parents mm-hmm. are from Vancouver Island. So mountains everywhere outside your backyard. Now I live in North Carolina. So it actually pains me because there's really no hills to go. Mm, really? And I don't like just like going on flat ground because I'm used to mountains and stuff. But if I lived here... Yeah. That I was, would do a lot better on the hills. <laughs> that was a good, I mean, you did great. You Those did are great. hard though. You were running the hills. I was impressed. I was doing my very best. Those are hard hills yeah. though. I mean, they're fun. If you're going to run, that's where you want to run. The hill will pretty much take all you got. So if it's, if it's not hurting enough, just run a little faster. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? I would, yeah, no, that was pretty much my fast. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, I see why you love it. I don't know how you do it. I think that's mostly what I I was like, what in the actual heck? Like, how does someone do what you do up hills like this? And you're like trying to find your footing. It's good. I think, you know, I do, as you know, I do it for hunting because I think that even making those quick decisions running down, it's like in hunting, a lot of a good stock is foot placement. You know, you can't be breaking sticks. You can't be kicking rocks. You can't. So it's all that body awareness. I think that being in the mountains helps body awareness. So I do that to help it enhance my hunting and, and hunting enhances my running. Mm-hmm. So. But really, I think the reason I can pretty much pinpoint what I don't like about it is because I'm out of breath and like you only get through that by doing it more. So right. like I get the concept. <laughs> if I was running up that mountain and like smiling and not out of breath, I mean, I would like it, but then I'd probably want to do something harder. So I get, I mean, I Cor- get the Courtney's cycle. always smiling when she does it. That's Courtney. I don't know if she's human. <laughs> right. And she also does it for like six days and straight. she can be. Yeah. She's That's better. so cool. She's definitely that better is, than me. That is super cool. That she, I mean, yeah. she must be a, just a beast. Yeah, I think, uh, and I don't know, I've said this before. I can't remember if I've said it on the podcast, but as far as endurance, I think that women have, I think they have an advantage over men. And I think that women are built to withstand pain. I think it's from preparing mm-hmm. for childbearing, <laughs> yeah. but it's like the pain. I think, I think women are tougher. I think it's, it's harder because men might be stronger. They might be a little faster in bursts, but when it comes to endurance, there's some women like Courtney who are incredible. I mean, and you, and you today, Courtney and you <laughs> <laughs> next e time. starts with an E. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Courtney and Eva. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we haven't run until today. So now we've done it. And we've, have we shot before? Shot. I don't know if we've actually shot before. I don't think together. so. No, because I, I, all I've ever seen you shoot is on your page. 
Yeah. You know, but which today, is not a hundred yards. Let me tell you that. But uh, no. now that was so fun. Now I'm going to be out there. I'm going to need a bigger target though at my house. <laughs> the good thing about on social media though, is every shot is perfect <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> because true. if it's not, it doesn't make social media. <laughs> That's a good point. So I'm a really good shot. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I've watched you shoot on Instagram. And I'm like, ah, she's pretty good, but I don't shoot that far. Like I shoot, yeah. if I shoot, I, I mean, I pretty much max out like I've tried to go as far as I could and I couldn't, I never knew you could hold like over. I've just never really yeah. thought of doing that before, like completely out of my sight. So I just shoot as far as my sight can go, which is 70, but mm-hmm. I don't really shoot 70. Like I'll shoot 50 and in my head, like shooting 50, that's perfect. But Dale Brisby, he puts his target out at about 15 yards and says it's 83. <laughs> so you can do that too. I think too. there's a lot of hunters that do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like the queen of... I mean, underselling what I can do. Mm. And I think I've always like, I like not taking myself too seriously. So I like doing well at things. Like I'm not going to like goof around and I hate being the worst, but right. I also like try not to take it too seriously. Cause it just, I don't have time. Yeah. You want to have fun. Yeah. But I mean the shooting and when I go places, I'm like, I don't shoot far. Whereas most people come and say, I shoot far. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, let me tell you something like my mule deer hunt. I was like, no, I don't want to shoot far. I'm not interested. I will let it walk. I needed to be in control. And I just, I mean, I had two babies. So I was on yeah. like mom life. I mean, I still am mom life, but that, I took a few years of. That buck was amazing. <laughs> Wasn't it? Awesome? That was amazing. I know. Rihanna was keeping me updated as you were stalking out there. I about died. With Alex. And I was like, she was telling me how close you guys were. And I'm like, shit, don't get too close. Cause you know, when those bucks stand up and they see something right there, they're going to we explode were out. 17 yards. I know. For like. I think it was like three and a half hours and we were seven. We, we started at maybe like 35 and what I had told Alex and it's like exactly what I said. I was like, I don't want to shoot far. This, that was my first serious archery hunt since like five years. Yeah. Before my kids, I mean, I've gone out like in a stand, whatever. And I not spot and stock. And I just, I was like wounding something is, I hate it. Like it's the worst. Mm -hmm. And I just wasn't super confident. I've been shooting, but like, you know, not too seriously. So I was like, I don't want to shoot far. That's not happening. And so we went out, we got to 35 yards and he had some range finder. I think it was like in his binos and it stopped at 35. So he's like, this is good. I was like, why are we stopping? I said, I have a loophole. Right. (laughs) I'm like, please use this and let us get closer. So we ended up at 17 yards and I was on my knees in the, what's it called? The Milo? Oh, Milo. Milo, Yeah. 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 Um, in the Milo, which was like the most perfect ex- like situation because it was all sand. And I sat there fully knocked. I yeah. mean, you would have loved it because it was super uncomfortable. Yeah, <laughs> it was <laughs> hot hours, and sunny. that's hard. Three and a half. And I, could, I literally wouldn't even like barely blink because I knew I would have, you know, what, mm-hmm. two seconds right. from the minute he stood up or like moved. And if you're doing anything. So I was like knocked like this yeah. for like three and a half hours. Waiting for... Like one movement of him getting right. up so she could be ready. And all Alex, I mean, Alex, a couple of times he got up and like went up and he was like, I could shoot him like bed it. And I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm going to sit yeah. and wait. I just, my dad taught me, he's like a conservative kind of hunter. Like right. you sit, you control the situation. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm not going to go do that. And so I just waited and like, hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> and Alex just kept saying, oh my gosh, his antlers are so big. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're not. I mean, yeah. I was, I was like saying prayers and I shot at 17 years. He stood up I mean, it's on, it's on an iPhone because yeah. I kind of panicked and didn't want like extra bodies right. all around just because we were so close. And I shot at 17 yards and it had a little mark on his back, like just below his spine. To hold on? No. Oh. <laughs> No, no, no. The, the, the buck had like some kind of little, like a burr on his back. Oh, okay. So when I shot, I was like about to black out because I was just, I mean, three and a half hours of just thinking about my shot and I shot and I, all I saw was the burr of oh, high on his back and I go, that was it, and I think I said arrow. the F word and then, which I don't usually say, and then I thought it was my arrow yeah. and I about died. And then Alex just started melting down and he was like, you got him. And then we watched, he went like 60 yards and then went down. Really? It was the guy's perfect, sh- perfect, perfect shot. Perfect shot. Yeah. Not where I, where the burr was, but perfect shot. Right. I know everything happens in, mm-hmm. you know, warp speed basically. It, I couldn't, I mean. The fact that I did not black out. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can shoot 110 in calm situations. Give me something that gets my adrenaline going and I'm... Well, I mean, technically you shoot great. So it, it, I'm not surprised. But yeah, I understand when with adrenaline peaking, people make mistakes. All the, people blow 17-yard shots all the time on big bulls. A big bull will come in and people shoot over their back. Yeah, well, I mean, the mule deer is pretty big too, but still. I know. And that buck was like 
220 inches. How big was it? Bigger. So I haven't got it officially scored. They scored it at 242. And then oh down, it's at like 237, I think, with the deductions. And it's sitting, it's so beautiful. And it's sitting right in my living room right now. And Do you know how many like, like long time hunters that makes crazy? I know. And we spotted it too. Like we saw it the first day. Because <laughs> that's and a bigger then, buck I know. than most people will ever see. So I was in camp. This is like how much I don't take myself seriously. Like we spotted it and then we let it. Or do we spook it or we let it bed or something. We left. Mm -hmm. And then the next morning and all night I was like at camp, I was like, please let someone else go after it. Let somebody else go after this book. Like, I don't want to be the you one. You didn't to want think. that pressure No, or I just didn't. I don't know. I just, the whole thing was, it was just so big. I don't know. And I usually, Did Didn't I think love, you deserved it or what? Maybe. I deserved a deer like that. I just wasn't expecting that. Yeah. And like, I think what I wanted to do was be in so control of the situation. I mm -hmm. didn't want the pressure that they'd be like mad at me if I let it walk. Cause I didn't want to shoot at 35. Right. And okay. so, and I wasn't going to shoot at 35 and I told them that. So I was like, I'd rather get something smaller and just have a situation where I feel confident mm -hmm. in my shot than care just about the antlers. Cause I don't really, I care about antlers, but I care more about doing a good job. Yeah. So that's what it was about. And I just was, there was, I mean, the whole, you're probably used to this. And I mean, I guess I used to be, but it's been a few years. Like the whole road was our crew from their like spotting scopes yeah. watching my every move. Yeah. That's, that's pressure. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it worked out good. And then I'm like, retirement. <laughs> oh, I know. It's no, now an, I'm hooked. <laughs> such an again. incredible deer. I mean, I was, I couldn't believe it with the updates and then finally got, you know, you got it, made a perfect shot. It's just like, it just doesn't happen like that. I know. You know what I mean? It doesn't happen a 240 inch buck where you can get 17 yards from and have it stand up and make a shot like that. Yeah. I mean, that just is so rare. I'm excited to announce a partnership with Ice Barrel Cold Plunges. You guys know that I make it a daily ritual to jump into the ice bath before a long run just to get my head right. Just a little bump. And Ice Barrel has provided a cost-effective solution for your cold plunge needs. Ice baths are one of the fastest ways I reset my body because it releases all the endorphins in the most natural way. I like to suffer, and I can tell you, once you start using an Ice Barrel cold plunge, you'll like the cold-induced suffer as well. Cold therapy reduces inflammation and pain by constricting blood flow to muscles. By temporarily reducing nerve activity, cold therapy reduces swelling and muscle spasms. Get yours at iceburl.com and use code CAM for $125 off. Hey guys, you want to be as smart as famed neuroscientist Andrew Huberman, PhD at Stanford? Well, sadly, that's probably not going to happen but I did find something that can help, and that's HVMN Ketone IQ. I actually downed one right before reading this, so if I sound decent, it's probably why. Because I'm not sure if you guys realize how much brain power podcasting takes, but whatever I can take that will at least make me sound smarter, I'm in. Ketone IQ is a clean energy boost without sugar or caffeine. Ketone IQ increases your blood ketones. I'm not on a keto diet, but by taking Ketone IQ, I can achieve the desired focus and energy for explosive workouts that ketones typically provide to those in ketosis. You can find Ketone IQ at your local Sprouts or online at hvmn.com. Use code CAM, C-A-M, for 20% off your first order. But, you know, and, and I know because I've been, you know, I've been the guy coming up who didn't get very good opportunities. And now I have the best opportunities in the world. And it's like, I know how it feels from the outside looking in and you, and you know, you know, you want hunting is a brotherhood, is it, but there is, there's egos and jealousies. And then you're wondering how, what perception's like and being in social media, all that is kind of weighing in mm -hmm. on what we love. What we love is experience of hunting. Yeah. And then all these other things weigh in. It's how, I mean, You've been at the, at the forefront of like, you know, growing up as a shocky, being a girl and being so good on camera, getting those amazing opportunities. What has it been like navigating social media with, with those challenges? Well, I had a really good timing at the beginning. I mean, I started social, I was 20, I'm 35, 22. So, mm -hmm. you know, I 
long enough ago that it was just starting to come up and I was starting on Facebook. I, at the time was running my dad's social. So I actually started his social and my social at the same time and were, was just populating the pages. But I think I cared more about mine because mine like was double of what his yeah. was. <laughs> Probably gave his a little less attention. So what I liked about it, and I'm very grateful that I started when I was old enough to understand like, you know, what to put out there and what now I'm just horrified at the fact social media is in like 13 year olds hands. Like it just I know. scares the heck out of me because I have a daughter, mm-hmm. but I started, I was old enough to understand that. And for me, it was a huge blessing because I grew up without girls who hunted. Like my mm-hmm. mom was a ballerina vegetarian, like the most amazing, but doesn't hunt. And so I didn't have ac- access to any female hunters and which is what took me so long to start hunting. Cause I mm-hmm. literally just kind of thought, you know, people will think I'm super masculine and male Mm -hmm. if I hunt and I'm not, but I love to hunt. And I, you know, it took me a while to get that confidence to be like, whatever I can hunt and still be feminine. But yeah. And then once I started hunting, my dad had warned me, he said, once you're a hunter, you need to just think it through if you want to do this, because you will be a target Mm -hmm. and you can never take that title off. Like you'll, if you're a hunter, once you're a hunter and that for essentially for whoever wants to be mad at you. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, okay, but I don't think I fully understood like, the attention I was going to get in the outdoor world, mm-hmm. bad and good. I right. mean, the good was wonderful, and it was great because I got to be a representative for a lot of people and a lot mm-hmm. of girls and Role hunters model. in general, mm-hmm. but I also was like the punching bag for a while because I think I maybe didn't fit the stereotype of the middle-aged, yeah. you know, redneck man, no offense. <laughs> Excuse me? I mean, I'm sitting right here. I'm actually past middle age now. I think I'm just old. My dad calls me middle age. I'm 35. I was like, yeah, yeah. Damn, what the heck? Well, you know, women, you know, guys can get old. Women can't really get old. That's how it works. Did you know that? Society is like, <coughs> no, you better, <laughs> you guys got to stay young and, and look good forever. We can get old and fat. It's fine. So just, oh, like, it's just, acceptable. F- yeah. just FYI. I didn't know if you knew that. Tim tells me all the time, like he's almost 40. I'm like, whoa. He's like, yeah, but you're 35. Yeah. That's like 50. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. Yeah, he's almost forty, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's exactly you and mm-hmm. Tim. Ugh, the worst. <laughs> but yeah, it was. I mean, you just get targeted more and judged more, mm-hmm. and I think <clears throat> this is strong water. <laughs> Best vodka. Uh, yeah, probably. The more, all I really did the whole time was think what I'm doing. I believe so strongly, and I'm so passionate about the message I'm sending of getting outdoors and being healthy and feeding your family and providing your meat and like what, there's nothing wrong with that. So if people are attacking me for something that is so like such a positive message, what am I going to do? You know, Mm. if I was doing something I didn't believe in, or if it was kind of like, you know, I was playing in the gray area, maybe I wouldn't sleep at night, but I got, I mean, thousands and thousands of death threats for years and years when I was really like heavy into it in my early, like mid twenties. And it was just, I think in my mind, it was worth it. Like it was worth putting myself out there because I had an opportunity and a platform and not everyone does Mm -hmm. like why waste that? And I could spread the message about hunting and like the amount of girls that I've met in my life that I met someone yesterday that was 23. And I mean, I'm now not the young one anymore, which (laughs) I feel like you've probably been through at some point, but I sometimes still feel like I'm the young one in the industry and I'm not, I'm now the one that the young ones watched when they were little. (laughs) And so she was 24 or 23 and told me that. And I was like, Oh, thank you. (laughs) Thank you. I guess that's so sweet, but also like stab me in the heart. (laughs) Yeah. I, well, I mean, I, I've seen your influence because as we talked about at the Western hunt expo, the lines of young girls and, and, or teenage girls coming up and like you, you were the role model and they could see that you could still be feminine, pretty and get out there and hunt. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it gives, gives them, I don't know. I mean, not permission, but it's like, I guess she can do it. I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of validates if they've had those thoughts, Mm -hmm. that's like, it's okay to have those thoughts and have those aspirations. And not be embarrassed about it. Right. I could be a hunter. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's probably been, I'm sure, I know there's been challenges. And then what I've seen is then the industry kind of went to the, uh, God, then the girls who very natural and organic way you got in. And then there was the transition of girls who, do they really care about hunting or do they care about the attention? (laughs) Yeah. Well, the social media shifted a little bit. It did. I don't think, I mean, none of us knew what it was going to be like Mm -mm. when it started and it was great, but then it changed. I mean, it's still... (laughs) 
<laughs> not my favorite all the time. I, I prefer the old days of how it was at the beginning, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's not. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I think that it's kind of transitioned. I think the girls who got in it, you know, the bikini bow fishing type stuff and mm -hmm. just kind of excuses just to wear their bikini and have a bow, which is, Hey, that's great yeah. too for me. Well, but. <laughs> the thing about social, I like to find the positive in things. The thing about social is that there's something for everybody mm -hmm. and like, that's not me. And so people, and I've, I mean, I have a family now. I have two babies. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I took like, I didn't take five years off, but I definitely right. can't go hike scaled mountains when I'm, yeah, scaled it back. Cause I wanted, I still like being a mom is my favorite part of everything, but people have had to grow with me too. Like, you know, I mean, that's why I haven't seen you in five years because yeah. you didn't feel like hanging out with me in carpool right. ever. In the, <laughs> like, in the soccer mom van. In the minivan. I don't have a the minivan. Min yes, I'll you do. Never, no, I just got a wagon here and it's really cool. You probably but, just wear pajamas all day, and <laughs> right? <laughs> but like people grow and they have to adapt to, you know, my new message is outdoor balanced lifestyle with your family. And that's because that's yeah. true to who I am now. But there's also people, there's the young, like the girl I yes, met yesterday, Maria Lovely. She's awesome. She's from Montana. Hmm. She does all the outdoor cool stuff. She's beautiful. Just name, like yeah. so sweet. So like for me, like that's who I would want to follow. But if some people want to follow more like provocative, that's fine too. There's people for everybody. What I was going to say is I, it feels like that phase is kind of going, now it's like everybody, or I don't want to say weather the storm, but that phase <laughs> is kind done, of, yeah. and now it's been like, okay, the girls who are still around and, and still doing it, that's like, those are the ones who always cared. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I feel like the, the one, the girl you mentioned, you, Rihanna, um, I know Han Hannah Barron, she mm -hmm. loves yep. just being out. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it feels like there's some real authentic outdoors women out there that are just, they love, they love it. Which is, and it's that's the, the best. Yeah. I was mm -hmm. talking, the same girl I was just talking about. So, cause she's the younger one, you know, in the industry, she's kind of figuring out what she wants to do. Yeah. And one of the things I was saying to her, I was talking about when I started out, there was a bunch of us, like there was, you know, I I'm not name them, but like there was a little roster of girls that were kind of in the early twenties. Like I was mm -hmm. big smile, fun personalities, like good on camera. And what I think maybe differentiated me from some of them because they didn't like go all the way through, like they're not still really around, yeah. maybe by choice, maybe, maybe not, was making sure you're giving good yeses and more no's than yeses. So your no's are more important. Saying no like to what? opportunities, like when people offer you more money, but it's something that doesn't align with your brand. Okay. So they're offering you to do in my situation, which for some reason, no one's ever offered this to me, but bikini bow fishing, <laughs> <laughs> like, Oh, they're like, here's a hundred grand or here's a million dollars or $5 right. million. Like if it doesn't align with your, the brand and the direction you want to go and your values more importantly than anything, you have to say no. Otherwise mm. your brand is, you're not going to keep the message you want to keep and keep sending it to the people that you actually want to target. Right. And for me, it's, that's not my message. And mm. so I've left a lot of money on the table by making sure I'm making good decisions that I believe in and I can stand behind. And sometimes I feel like the people that don't stay around, it's because more of a quick money type yeah. of thing, quick, like, Oh, followers, money, whatever, which again, I mean, that's fine, but it's just not who I am. It, it usually works for maybe one or two deals, but the long game, mm -hmm. no, because people are going to, the public is who you're convincing or whatever it is. Those are the consumers. Mm -hmm. So if they believe that's a, a money move or it's not authentic to, as you say, your brand, it's going to be one or two deals and it's over. Yeah. Where if you're playing the long game and you're staying true to what you believe and, and your ethos, yeah. And you feel good about it. I that, mean, who doesn't the, feel, and that's the thing with social, which I think is also different than other media forms like TV and whatever, we can edit it all down and really you're filming for a day or two days and then you're not filming for a few weeks. Social, it's there. Like, I mean, your phone's right there. I put mine away. <laughs> it's yeah. trying to be polite, but like it's on me all the time. I'm constantly filming stories, whatever. Imagine trying to fake that, like fake a type of person you are yeah. when it follows you all the time. And that's another thing Like you would be exhausted. If social is mm -hmm. hard enough, just being real, <laughs> let alone if you were trying to like pretend you were someone Curate else. This and, image. Yeah, like, yeah. I do not have time for that. No, Half neither. the time I'm like, I always say it into my social, like my mom would be horrified at how I look right now on camera. Cause she's, you know, my mom's like yeah. the most perfect human in the world. And she really is that yeah. beautiful and whatever. But I'm like, I don't have time for that. I love your mom. <laughs> I she's love my mom too. She's the best. The nicest person. <laughs> I, know. I mean, and I so much respect for your dad also, but your, your family, but your mom is just like 
always like, I think of a woman of grace, she you is. know, and it's, uh, yeah. The most graceful. So you work with my brother a whole bunch. Yes. So I just want to know which family member you enjoy working with more. Um, probably like hanging out with you, but if I need something <laughs> done that's going to look good, <laughs> probably Branlin. <laughs> that's a good answer. I'm more of a personality person. Yeah. Like that's yeah, what I personality, think Yeah. Yeah. If we're going to, you know, have fun. <laughs> yeah. Branlin's pretty boring. You need, yeah, but he's so smart and he's so right. sweet. Right. He's the nicest shock. Some, Him and my mom are so kind. Sometimes I don't want smart people around. Right. Like yeah, you just don't want to Because then they're putting pressure on myself. And it's yeah. like, God, I'm, in, you know, it just makes me feel bad. So I know. I grew up can, with him. I'm like, how dumb He can do his I? nerd stuff at home and then we can just go and lift weights. You need to get him to shoot a bow. I don't, I don't even know if he could pull a bow back. He's, he probably can't. He's actually, I used to make fun of him because he's so skinny. I mean, yeah. That's the only thing I could really make fun of him because everything else he's kind of got going for him. He was super skinny, like one of those like golden retriever puppies. But now he's kind of jacked. He's, I don't want like, to admit I... that, but he has some gray hair. So I'm like, that's what I'm going to make fun of. But I mean, he, even actually, that, he still looks good. He actually tried to bench. Did he try to bench 225, Tan? Yeah. He didn't get it, did he? No. <laughs> so yeah, he did try to bench. <laughs> bench once but he is and his arms are like from they're there long to there. i mean yeah so i have to <laughs> my range of motion is like six inches because i'm you know 4 11 he's seven foot tall almost yeah. so yeah it's a little bit different i but know but i think he's like pretty wiry let's just say that yeah yeah i mean he's naturally he's gonna age a lot better than me <laughs> yeah I don't and, love that about him and he's very nice too on top of that but enough about brandley Anyways, come on yeah yeah. We're here for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Focus. Um, so what's, I mean, what are you up to now and what's your goals? I mean, so you've went through this whole transition from the young girl in the, in the industry to the mom. Now what? Well, I'm still a mom. I have a three oh. and a six year old. <laughs> They're that still going? around. Oh, They're the best. My daughter Lenny is six and she just starts shooting a bow yeah. and it's, I think Very my favorite kids. stage of Very life because kids. like a little kid shooting a bow and it just makes me so happy. So I've transitioned, which is another the outdoor industry. Like I can't brag about the outdoor industry enough because it's the best. It is. And it's so family oriented. And like, I mean, you know, you have your son right here and then you have your other son that works with you all the time and mm -hmm. your daughter's too smart for your business. So Wait, hold, we already save talked it for about, the show. We talked Her about show. that. <laughs> Yeah. But like, I love that it's so family oriented. So mm -hmm. being able to still, I mean, I still go on trips. I still shoot my bow. I still cook wild game. I still live an outdoor lifestyle, but it's like family oriented now. And so it took me a while after kids just, I'm like, holy kids are really flipping hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially when you've kind of lived a life of like independence and adventure kids yeah. are like whatever the opposite of that is is Anchor. like no adventure <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> super cute but like you're not independent because they're always you know they're always right. there um but i love them they're the best so now it's i started brand i mean not too dissimilar to you except just like a really little tiny version of what you do but getting my own stuff and my own products and that's been fun because i can be creative and build my own thing but a challenge in itself what's your brand called even co oh, so even co, even I know. co. are you not the number one fan yeah, of it your, your brother has actually been bragging about how well you're doing he <laughs> it's has. going yeah, yeah he says I you mean, have employees i have them but well that we were talking about that in the chat early that's so i don't know if you i feel like you might have this in common before like the bigger brand and this whole thing which again i don't have this but like it's still it's relative mm -hmm. I mean, I was doing good and with like the partnerships and endorsements and it was so fun on TV shows, but there was like no overhead. It was just like, yeah. you know, you're getting paychecks and you're doing what you love. And I'm like, this is the best. And you're just kind of like, you know, paying off your house and whatever. And then you start a brand and you're like, oh, I actually need help. I need people mm -hmm. to do things that I don't know how to do, like the ads and the whatever. And so now I have a whole bunch of employees. I mean, mm -hmm. like seven people. That's a lot that for is. me. That is. <laughs> I'm just sweating every day. Like you guys are paying your bills and for your kids' food because of me. Like I need to get my stuff together. So it's just, but yeah, it's going well. It's just a yeah. lot. Yeah, I know. I've, I've, you can tell me if this is similar, but I mean, I was making good money on my own and then took on this responsibility, have this vision for building this, but it, there's something that feels good. And you kind of mentioned it about having people that, 
I mean, I, I had, I don't need anything else, but it's kind of cool having people work and mm-hmm. like you're paying them and they're able to, to, to do what they love too. Yep. And it's like, maybe I'm making less, but other people are part of it. Yeah. That feels Going good. along the path. That it, feels good. I mean, I absolutely make less. I'm like, should I be concerned about that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not paying myself out of my business, but everyone mm. else is getting paid. But yeah, like having all these people and generally, I mean, everyone here is really on track with you and my team is all with me. And it's also because what we, the industry we're in and what we kind of have done, it's like kind of isolating, which I feel like you might like. I don't really like yeah. that. Yeah. I like talking to people. And so I've worked for myself for my whole life. And so it's nice to have a team and it's almost like, Hey, you know, yeah, still share, your, yeah. share it with somebody. Yeah. Have some and have goals and learn things that are out of my comfort zone. And that I'm like, what the heck? I didn't know I had to learn this. Well, I mean, what I like about what I do in, in addition to the people that I work with and your brother's a key member of that, but, uh, is visiting with people like you. I mean, what I always say is I talk to outliers, people who, whatever in their field, they've st- stood out, they've separated themselves and they, they're making a difference. And I always feel like I can learn from people like that. And, you know, I've watched you in your career and it's like, it's incredible what you've done. And from the outside in, I've been an Eva Shockey fan forever. I saw your Eva and Co stuff everywhere in here. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, I actually put some of it away because it's a little embarrassing. It was like a super, like super a fan. <laughs> kind of stalkerish. So yeah, I hid some of it, but, uh, it's, um, it's, you know, hunting to me, it's probably been different. You know, you can tell me it's been different, but for a long time I hunted and I loved it. I didn't care if I made a dime. Right. And so then it's just what I love to do. But then these companies, I could see they were using me and they're making money. Why can't I make money? And my <laughs> thing was like, those are smart, smart companies. Like I yeah. love them. And you know, we love the companies we work with and mm-hmm. the brands. They're very smart. They're big companies with a lot of brains. Yeah. And if they keep hiring me for what I'm doing, like, you know, that on the back end, which you don't necessarily see, I mean, mm-hmm. the big brands, at least they don't tell me most of the time, like, you know, you're selling a lot of stuff. So I was like, why? I still like that. Like I do. I really genuinely feels good. Yeah. And like diversifying the different brands. I mean, I'm not going to mm-hmm. start a company with every single type of thing in it. So I still work with amazing brands in the outdoor yeah. space, but it's nice to have your own thing. But yeah, it's just harder. <laughs> it, it was for me, it was hard to say, I'm going to make money off of hunting for, because it was something that I just loved to do. And mm-hmm. then to look at it as a business was a hard transition for me. I yeah. mean, you, your dad had kind of established the business part of it. So maybe it was more of a natural, you understood that mindset. To me, it was just like, it was, that was weird. But then once I did it, because I saw that how the business worked and I'm like, well, the more success I can have working with these companies, the more incredible hunts I can experience go to incredible different country, meet amazing people. Yeah. Maybe I need to change my stance on this and be like, well, no, I have value. I need to make, take yeah, advantage of it. Control the narrative of where it's going. Exactly. I came up from it. I mean, growing up in a, in my Jim Shockey's daughter, mm-hmm. if I feel like some of your listeners probably know him, some don't, but like world renowned hunter and TV show, whatever, had all kinds of stuff going outfitting areas, still has them all running. So I came up in hunting is a job like Mm -hmm. it's a passion but he that's how he paid you know for school for us that's how my mom didn't work like that is how Mm -hmm. we lived our lives and what was my favorite part about growing up is that we got to go on adventures and go learn stuff from other cultures and go on the hunts and go on the trips and then now that i'm a bit older i'm like holy heck those are expensive yeah (laughs) and you can't you know like my dad says his goal is to spend every dime of his before he's gone. Like <laughs> there's no money waiting for me. So I'm like, if I want my kids to go on these adventures, you have to pay for it. So it's nice. I've always been told to do what you love and what you're passionate about. So you at least love doing it 80% of the time. Like mm-hmm. everyone has 20% that they don't love, yeah, you know, yeah. but like you want to wake up and be excited. And I'm so excited to just work in the outdoor space. And I still, I mean, it's still, some people say, what do you do? I'm like, I, yeah. <laughs> Influencer. No, I hate oh. that word. But also like, yeah, kind of. Huntress. No, but now I have, I have like an online marketplace, so it's fine. Oh, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> I, that, that made me think of something. What's the most important thing you think you've learned from your dad 
in, in this business. Oh my gosh, he's so smart. He's actually like way smarter than I ever gave him credit for. <laughs> I think that's so, most kids, but your dad is also very smart. He too, actually so. is really smart yeah. though. <laughs> um, the thing that I've learned would be just like the hardworking. He never, and we're very similar. So there were some years as a teenager that we butted heads. Mm-hmm. And I mean, to be fair, we still do. <laughs> like we do, but respectfully now before I was like, my dad, I'm like, you know, 16 and angry. Uh, but we're, it's because we're so similar. We're very mm-hmm. hard headed. We're very stubborn and we have big personalities and we like to like joke and push limits a little bit. So just the hardworking aspect I never really saw him slow down and Mm. stop like that. He always had goals that he wanted to attain, which I love that you're always just doing your best. You're never, you know, doing like, if you're not going to do it all the way, don't do it type Mm -hmm. thing. Um, and I think just being really respectful to people like he, I watched him, whatever you think our line was. I mean, now your lines are to Mars and back, but like, his lines to meet him and just to say hi and grown men would start crying. I mean, again, I know you're Mm -hmm. used to this, but 10 years ago, that was like, he was really the only one that had that. Like it was kind of him and no one. And so he would stay there. I mean, I'd be bored out of my mind after as like a 20 year old and like, okay, can we go get dinner? And he would stay there for hours and give every ounce of attention to every single person that came to the line because he's like, they might've driven eight hours to say hi for 30 seconds. And if that's the one person that, you were ignoring because you're talking about going for dinner. Like they will remember that for their whole life and they'll probably tell everyone. And suddenly you're like the worst person. So just like working hard, doing what you love and just giving people time, Mm -hmm. I think, and showing, you know, they let, they're letting us have this career, you know, and this job and this lifestyle. Like it's not because they have to be there. (laughs) They have to be interested in what we're doing and you kind of can't be an a-hole. Right. And expect them to stick around. Yeah. This isn't, (laughs) Yeah, we, we need, I mean, that's why we're valuable to companies. Mm-hmm. I, I understand that. But I think, you know, you saying that your dad being an outfitter from day one, basically, that's such hard work. Outfitters work their, at, the successful ones, the ones who stay around, mm-hmm. work their asses off and get a, a not much fanfare. You know, a lot yeah. of times the hunters will go, the outfitters kind of like, who was that outfitter again? The hunters, <laughs> the glory. So your dad coming up, grinding for years. And then I, I read his articles 30 years ago. He was always one of my favorite writers in the back page of North American Hunter magazine. He had shock therapy or something like that. But yeah, I was like, God, this guy, this guy can write. He is so, you, I mean, you, you're going to get his book. He told yeah. me, he said, Cam's getting it. I'm sending it. So it's called Call Me Hunter. And it, we were talking about it earlier. I read it and it, mm-hmm. my brain was just like exploding from all angles because it's so good. And I knew he was smart and I knew he's a good writer. And I guess he just really put those two things together and ran with it. And his book's going to be awesome. But it's just, it's nice to see him because once again, he's always said if he was ever a janitor, he'd be the very best janitor. Like it doesn't matter what he does. He wants to be the best at it, which... (laughs) I don't know if you can, mm-hmm. if you guys have that in common. Well, <laughs> but he, he is so good, so well spoken and, and articulate. He can, like, whatever side of the argument you want to argue, he can, I don't know, combat it or he, I don't know, he just has a great. Uh, Manipulate it. Imagine being his teenage daughter. <laughs> well, I couldn't win a single I argument. Not. I still can. And when we start arguing, I'm like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> Do you, do you know, I've, I've even learned, well, more than one thing from your dad. One of it is, well, I used to wear a bandana like your dad did, but, um, and I think you did today too. But, um, one thing I'll never forget. And it was something about, I, I remembered this because it kind of flipped a switch for me about my value in the industry, but we were at a meeting in Under Armour and they were talking about this line and he was there and Kip was there and it's like, this is when hunting was blowing up at Under Armour. Mm-hmm. And he said, he goes, well, he goes, you know what? He goes, you know what I'm concerned with? RFJ. Do you know what this means? We were just texting about this <laughs> really? today. Yes. He Here's, goes, RFJ. After. Yeah. And he's like, he goes, revenue for Jim. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's great that the company makes money, yeah. but hey. But if you believe in it, you're like, okay, I'm actually doing good things. Yeah. So, you know, like, but yeah, I'm going to have to make money because that's what like people are like, oh, you're taking payment. You're like, well, if you go do, if you're a plumber and you go do a job, yeah. you're not going to be like, you know what? 
I love toilets, so I'm going to do this one for free. Like, yeah, yeah I do love, me. I mean, I don't passion. watch those. Yeah, I love the outdoors, but like, you can go pay your bills. But my dad and I were just talking about that because he said, let Cam know I sent him the ARC, like the advanced reader copy. And I wrote back and I said, what's the RFE today? And we haven't said that in years. Oh. It was just so funny you bring that up. And yeah. he started laughing. I'll like never... he taught me to do well because I, what's it called? The, the student became the teacher. Oh, right. <laughs> Is exactly. That the one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that, that was it, I guess, because I don't know. It, it's, I'll just never forget that. And that was years ago, but, um, it just kind of, he's always been like somebody who I've admired and followed. And then your family, you know, is, I can't tell you how much your family's impacted me, not just no. working with Branlin, but, but you no know, being friends with you and, and I don't know your mom that well, but I've always she's the best out of all of us lo- loved every <laughs> inter- interaction with her. And I know she's so sweet and, um, yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you for making time for doing all this for me Thank today. You. I wish we had more time. This is killing me. I don't want to go to the airport. My my alarm just went off. That means we got to head to the airport. I but I'm I'm very grateful for you taking time out to come all the way over here and do the lift run shoot. It was uh it was an honor. Thank you. And my legs will be thinking of you tomorrow when I can't walk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Eva. It was fun. Thanks, Cam. Every step I take, I move my truth. Every time they tell me stop, I use every comment, hate that makes my feel gather up my energy and boom. I hear them talking, saying the way that I move is so reckless. That is a part of my mind I've been blessed with. Giving my blood so I am relentless. My fault, they want someone to blame. They sent the hate, it fuels my pace. I am Roy Tough. I am the change, the fuel, endure. Feeling like Cam Haynes.